My name is Johan Fagen and I'm from the University of Cape Town in Cape Town, South Africa. I'm going to be uh, demonstrating the submedibular gland excision focusing on the surgical technique in this video. The submedibular salivary gland is located in level 1b of the neck between the mandible above and the hyoid bone below. It is commonly removed for uh, tumors involving the submandibular salivary gland or for calculi which cannot be removed transorally or by stylo endoscopy technique. And is also removed as part of uh, a neck dissection and may also be removed to provide access to the facial artery as a donor vessel for free flaps. For surgeons not familiar with the anatomy of this area, it can be quite challenging due to all the nerves and vessels that traverse this area. Um, it can be particularly difficult in the patient who's had inflammation of the gland, especially recently due to siloadenitis or an abscess of the submedibular salivary gland. And it is important in such cases to delay the surgery until the inflammation has settled down. The submandibular salivary gland is bound anteriorly by the anterior belly of digastric and posteriorly by the posterior belly of digastric and the stylohyoid muscle. The majority of the gland is located lateral to the and broad flat mylohyoid muscle which forms the floor of the mouth. When one reflects the gland posteriorly then uh, you will note the deep extension of the submandibular salivary gland medial or superior to the mylohyoid muscle with the submandibular duct uh, originating from its anterior point to extend to the anterior floor of the mouth. The first structure one encounters on exposing the submandibular salivary gland is the anterior facial vein. The vein courses superficial to the submandibular gland to cross the mandible superiorly. The facial artery courses medial to the posterior belly of digastric and posterior medial to the submandibular salivary gland and appears just above the gland to cross the mandible anterior to the vein. It gives off a number of branches to the uh, submandibular salivary gland, which need to be divided uh, should the artery be retained. The um, submental artery and submental vein originate from the anterior facial vein and the artery just below the ramus of the mandible and cross superior to the submandibular gland, giving off a variable number of small branches to the gland. Um, it is the pedicle on which the submental artery island flap is based. The marginal mandibular nerve is a branch of the facial nerve and crosses superficial to the gland. It uh, has a variable number of branches and can cross the gland up to three centimeters below the ramus of the mandible. It is located either superficial or within the um, fascia covering the submandibular salivary gland and um, has to be carefully preserved. Coursing medial to the gland and crossing the mylohyoid are the mylohyoid artery and the nerve to mylohyoid which supplies both the mylohyoid muscle as well as the anterior belly of the digastric. By reflecting the submandibular salivary gland inferiorly and retracting the posterior border of the mylohyoid muscle anteriorly with a Langebeck retractor, the fascial covering over the hyoglossus muscle comes into view. The submandibular salivary duct originates from the gland anterior superiorly and courses medial to the mylohyoid muscle towards the anterior floor of mouth. The hypoglossal nerve and its accompanying ranine veins are seen deep to the fascial covering over the hyoglossus muscle. 
these uh, structures also disappear anteriorly deep to the myelohyoid muscle. There's a clear interfascial plane one can strip with a finger between the fascial covering over the um, nerve and the hyoglossus on the one hand and the medial aspect of the salivary gland on the other hand. The lingual nerve is a broad flat nerve which is located supramedial to the submedibular salivary gland. As it courses anteriorly, it also disappears behind the myelohyoid muscle. The submedibular ganglion um, originates from the lingual nerve in, and is adherent to the submedibular gland. What is important to note is that one can descend quite freely over the lateral aspect of the myelohyoid muscle up to its posterior border without placing any of these structures at risk. So there are quite a number of important structures which, um, which cross this area, um, which can make the, the inexperienced surgeon quite nervous about doing this dissection. However, the most um, at risk structure would be the marginal mandibular nerve with injury to the hypoglossal and the lingual nerve being really unusual. I will now move on to the description of the surgical technique. The patient is placed supine with the head turned to the opposite side. The corner of the mouth and the lower mandible should be left exposed so that one can observe a twitching of the corner of the mouth should the marginal mandibular nerve be mechanically or electrically stimulated. For the same reason, it's important that the patient is not paralyzed for the duration of the operation. Mark your incision at the level of the hyoid bone in a skin crease about two finger breasts below the mandible. Incise the skin and subcutaneous fascia to expose the underlying fat, which is then divided using electrocautery um, and expose the platysma muscle. Transect the platysma muscle and um, expose the underlying fat, which is also divided, to then expose the submandibular salivary gland remaining inferiorly to protect the marginal mandibular nerve. Cut through the fascia surrounding the gland um, and uh, apply upward traction on the, the capsule of the gland. The set superiorly staying in a subcapsular plane to protect the marginal mandibular nerve. Once again, keep an eye on the corner of the mouth uh, during this dissection to detect any stimulation of the marginal mandibular nerve. Then you want to um, identify the, the facial vein inferiorly, which is clamped and uh, ligated. Having done that, you, one turns one's um, attention to the facial artery and facial vein superior to the gland using blunt dissection. And for the purposes of this video, I'm going to also show you the marginal mandibular nerve, which is just superior to the posterior blade of the scissors, where it crosses the facial artery and facial vein. Keeping the marginal mandibular nerve in view, um, isolate and um, clamp and divide the facial vein superior to the gland. Some surgeons like to apply traction to the tie on the superior pedicle of the vein to protect the marginal mandibular nerve, which of course runs superficial to the vein. Next, um, turn your attention to the facial artery also keeping the marginal lunar mandibular nerve um, in view. And this is also clamped and um, ligated. Um, when the facial artery needs to be um, pre preserved for a fan flap or vaccinator flap, then one needs to 
um, omit the step and dissect the artery out of the posterior aspect of the submandibular gland. Now turn your attention to the anterior part of the gland over the hyoid. You might get some troublesome bleeding as I show there coming from the hyoid vessels. Um, reflect the gland off the hyoid to find the posterior border of the hyoid. Retract the hyoid anteriorly and slip a finger into the interfascial plane between the gland and the floor of the triangle to expose the um, hypoglossal nerve and the Raynaud veins. Then slip a finger in deep to the gland to apply downward traction and to find the lingual nerve which is a broad flat nerve and the submandibular duct with some accessory tissue um, running along the duct. Divide the duct and the accessory salivary tissue Next, um, identify the submandibular ganglion uh, um, coming off the inferior aspect of the lingual nerve. Take care not to clamp across the lingual nerve during this um, procedure. And ligate this pedicle as there's always a vessel that runs with it, as well as ligating the submandibular duct. Then reflect the gland of the digastric and identify the facial artery where it um, appears from behind this, the posterior belly of digastric. This pedicle might be left long if it needs to be used for a flap and ligate the facial artery. So that's the dissection complete. That's the anterior belly of digastric, posterior belly of digastric the posterior border of the hyoid and the hypoglossal nerve, the Raynaud veins, the submandibular duct, the submandibular ganglion and the lingual nerve and the pedicle of the facial artery and the marginal mandibular nerve and the facial artery and vein superiorly. Well that is the completed dissection and um, if you want more detail, then you can um, read a very detailed description of the anatomy and the surgery in the Open Access Atlas of Otolaryngology, Head and Neck Operative Surgery.